Hello. Today we're trying to make uh, Raspberry Pi 3B Plus work with a cathode ray tube monitor television. Um, and the reason I'm making this video is because there wasn't exactly any perfect video explaining how to do this. So I thought I'll stick on YouTube and it'll help me remember if I uh, ever forget in the future. So let's get into it. The Raspberry Pi has a 3.5 millimeter four pole jack, it's known as TRRS. And the issue with these cables is that there's no standardization to them. So as you can see, I have a fine collection of them here. Basically, there's no standardization on which pole is the ground, which pole is the sound, and which pole is the video, meaning that you can get there's multiple different bad permutations um, and only few of these actually work when plugged directly into the jack on the Raspberry Pi. But somebody like me who likes to recycle stuff and not just buy new things, this is a bit frustrating. And when I were trying to make them work, uh, nothing was working. So I decided to do the known hack, which is to solder my own RCA connector directly onto the video feed and the earth. This certainly helped, but I still wasn't getting the right signal out of my Raspberry Pi. And this is the other part of the solution, which I would like to show to you now. First off, we're just gonna connect our keyboard. We're going to need to edit the config file in the SD card for the Pi. We're just running the normal noobs, Pi OS, I believe it's the newest version, and I think that might be actually what created some of my issues in this project. I'd also like to note that I bought the official 2.5 amp charger for the Raspberry Pi because I was worried that that was producing low quality signal out of the video jack as well. So when I was trying to troubleshoot this project, I needed to use the HDMI port in order to configure the Pi as I don't have a micro SD slot on another computer. So flashing is a bit awkward. I'm also relatively new to all of this stuff. So it gets a bit scary, doesn't it? I'd rather do it in the simplest fashion possible. Now, quite hilariously, I um, didn't have a monitor when testing it. So I had to use a projector. Thankfully, the projector had a composite input and a HDMI input. So I was able to switch the outputs on the Pi repeatedly just to be able to test if it was working or not. So here we've got an old laptop panel that's discolored. We've got it plugged into a laptop panel driver that takes HDMI. There you go. And we can see the Pi is booting up. It will take just one minute to boot up your Pi. Sometimes this is annoying to be able to differentiate between a black screen and a black screen. So hopefully you have a screen or a way of editing the config file inside of your Raspberry Pi. And then we will go into the terminal. So you type sudo, which is to do administrator commands, I believe. Nano to edit a file. And the, edit, the file which we want to edit is in forward slash boot forward slash config.txt. So now we're in Nano, and this is the config file for the Raspberry Pi. They use hash symbols to comment lines out. So as they say here, uncomment, you'd uncomment this command if you wanted this command to activate on boot up for the configuration file. So there's a few things in here that people on the internet will suggest will fix your problem. First is this one, which is SCTV mode. Now I'm British and this is technically a PAL TV, although it'll take NTSC signals as well. Um, but we can, in fact, there's mode zero, one, two, and three. So there's four modes which can be chosen there um, to configure it best for your monitor. And our next command that we can put in is to force SDTV aspect four by three. Now you might have to type that in yourself. But this wasn't particularly properly working for my Pi in particular, and I had various different errors, including uh, bad video blanking signals or the or H-Sync and V-Sync dis 
disturbance that there were a big white line across the bottom and a white line somewhere over here. But then as I was testing the Raspberry Pi between composite video and HDMI back and forth, I started to notice that I was still seeing the rainbow boot screen of the Raspberry Pi before it was going blank, which suggested to me that there was an issue somewhere further on down the line with hardware detection, possibly because I'd soldered in this nice connection here. So I got searching on the internet and I did find what I was looking for, which is that there is, which I can't remember the name for right now. So I guess we'll flash that information on the screen. But basically it's within Linux and the kernel, it's an open source hardware recognition program. And apparently it's just not working for my case scenario and hopefully yours too. So what I did was I disabled these drivers by adding a hash before them as well. And then we get onto the things for the command module four or the Pi four, which starts to make me think that they started to add certain things into this config that actually makes the newer versions of the Pi not work as easily out of the box when running analog video. So we will write this out, control O, enter to overwrite the config file then control X to exit. While we're still in the terminal, we can ask it to reboot. Now when we reboot it, the Pi auto detects whether it has HDMI or composite video plugged in. So when I reboot it, I'm going to pull the HDMI out as fast as I can. I'll also then try and plug this in quick enough for it to detect. And there we just caught the rainbow boot screen of the Pi, which is very useful for testing your device. Now it was even at this point that I was getting visual errors. And at this point, when the mouse pops up, that just wasn't happening at all. Or I was getting major video scanning disturbance. But by disabling, we've been able to default to the hardware within the Raspberry Pi, which seems perfectly capable of providing us with a nice stable power signal, as well as NTSC, but I won't show that off to you right now. I really hope that that has uh, helped you solve your problems because I've tried to do this quite a few times and been really annoyed when it hasn't worked out. As you can see, we definitely have got our Pi booting to the CRT monitor now with quite a lot of ease. So thanks very much for watching.